Good evening, and welcome to the live stream Bible study of the Abundant Love Church. Welcome here to my home, into my office. We got uh, six inches of snow today, and uh, so we're not having service in the sanctuary. So I thought to invite you all into my home as we go over our um, lesson for this evening and finish the theme for this particular month. And so we invite you this evening to worship the Lord with us, to study the word of the Lord, and let us grow thereby. So uh, contact your friends, uh, send them a little text, let them know that we're on the air this evening. Uh, one of the wonders of live streaming is that even when service is canceled, uh, live streaming works to our advantage. And so uh, we're going to open tonight with a little praise song. It's called, Let Your Glory Fill This House. It says, Let your glory fill this house. Let your glory fill this house. Let the fragrance of a fresh anointing fill the temple. Remove all fear and doubt, let your glory fill this house. Come in the house, come in the house. Jesus, you are welcome, come in the house. Let your glory fill the house. Your glory fill this house. Jesus, you are welcome. Let your glory fill this house. Yes, we do. We want his glory to fill this house. Uh, shall we pray? Father, in the matchless in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we thank you, Lord, for this day. Certainly, this is the day that you have made. We do rejoice and we are glad in this day. We thank you, Father, uh, for your guidance and your goodness. We thank you for your protection. Uh, we thank you, Father, that even though we received a considerable amount of snow, that you still allowed us to be able to get around and not be snowed in. Your grace and your mercy uh, has even been shown to us in this inclement weather. And so please know that we thank you. Uh, we thank you for life. We thank you for health. We thank you for strength. We thank you for salvation and cleansing through the blood of Jesus Christ. We thank you, Father, that the veil of the temple has been rent from top to bottom and that we have access now into the Holy of Holies. Uh, we can come before the Almighty God under the authority of Jesus Christ and we can receive the grace and mercy that we have need of. Uh, we pray this evening, Lord, that you would bless us, bless your word, let your word be strength to us, let your word uh, nourish us, and let your word cause us to grow. I pray, Father, for every person under the sound of my voice that will listen and participate and be fed tonight. We pray that the Spirit of God would word our mouth. And then, Father, give us the words that will edify and give new life. I pray, Father, that anyone that's watching this evening that doesn't know you in the pardon of their sins, uh, that saving faith would be generated this evening, that they would come to the Lord and say, what must I do to be saved? Now, Father, uh, bless your word tonight and bless this one that will teach. We give you glory and we give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so thank you. This is my, uh, you can't see it all, but this is uh, my humble little abode. This is my home office. Um, I've been in most of the day. I did clear the driveway and uh, the sidewalk, but for the most part, I've been in the house and uh, it's been a good day with the Lord. And so I've been anxiously looking and awaiting uh, this opportunity to teach the word of the Lord to you this evening. And so we're going to um, just sing one more song and then we'll go right into our lesson. This song has just been kind of ringing in my heart. It's an older song, but it's a very true song because uh, if it hadn't been for the Lord on my side, 
I don't know where I would be. And so the song goes like it says. If it had not been for the Lord on my side, tell me where would I be? Where would I be if it had not been for the Lord on my side? Tell me where would I be? Where would I be? He kept my enemies away. He let the sun shine through a cloudy day. He rocked me in the cradle of his arms. When he knew I'd been battered by the storm. So tell me if it had not been for the Lord on my side. Tell me where would I be? Where would I be? He kept my enemies away. He let the sun shine through a cloudy day. He rocked me in the cradle of his arms when he knew I'd been battered by the storm. So tell me if it had not been for the Lord on my side. Tell me where would I be? Where would I be? Tell me where would I be? Where would I be? God bless you. Amen. That's just a, my testimony over this past week. Certainly the Lord was on our side and he carried us through. And so thank you again for tuning in this evening. Uh, you Abundant Love members, of course. Uh, thank you all for tuning in and those regulars uh, that tune in. Certainly we are grateful to have you this evening. I'm uh, going to give you just a few pertinent announcements and then we'll go into our study this evening. Um, of course, this is the end of our theme, the end of our month. Um, we are finishing our 21-day consecration on Sunday, the 29th. This week, we are on the true Daniel fast. We're only eating pulse and water, and pulse is defined as anything that is grown from the ground. So uh, this has been a very prosperous uh, consecration for us, and we're looking forward to its completion. So hang in there, stay in there to the end, and the Lord certainly uh, will bless us. Our theme has been here for the month of January, Seek the Lord. But going forward, we're not going to necessarily work from a monthly theme, but we are going to read the Word of God, and then we're going to exegete in context. So in the month of February, we're going to start with the book of Romans. Romans is right after the Acts of the Apostles, and your assignment for next Wednesday is chapters 1 and 2. Now, I can't say exactly how fast we will be going because it kind of depends on what we encounter as we study and exegete. So uh, just read chapters 1 and 2 of the book of Romans. Uh, we will go through them leisurely so that we get understanding and get context. And then we will continue like that, giving you um, reading assignments. Uh, we also will email a handout. And what the handout will do It'll give you a verse by verse subject commentary. Verse by verse subject commentary. And so what it will do, it will take every verse 
and it will pull the major subjects out of that verse so that we can get understanding and context as we read. So again, we're going to start with the book of Romans, chapter number one and chapter number two for next Wednesday, which is February the 1st. Amen. Shout out today to my sister uh, and the creative genius behind Motivating Moments, my baby sister, Darlene Bush. Her birthday is today, and so we celebrate her, and we certainly celebrate the work that she does for our ministry with Motivating Moments. A um, little sad news here. Uh, one of our ministers, uh, Reverend Philip Johnson, uh, passed, and they are actually going to have his homegoing celebration this Friday in the city of Chicago. So we want to remember his wife, Flora, and the Philip family in prayer. Amen? Amen. All right. So having said that, uh, we're going to go into our subject tonight, into our lesson. We're going to finish our lesson this evening, and it has been for me a very profitable and a very rewarding lesson. It's just good. Uh, sometimes we think we know things, but just a good, healthy reminder of what it means to seek the Lord and how to seek the Lord actually works in our uh, to, works in our favor and works to our benefit as we consecrate in this month of January. Uh, our theme, Seek the Lord, we found two passages of scripture to uh, establish this particular thing. It is the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter number 55, verse 6 and 7. And then we have the prophet Jeremiah, chapter number 29, verses 12 and 13. And I will read them this evening in your hearing. Isaiah 55 and 6 says, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Verse number 7 says, Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord. And he will have mercy upon him and to our God for, because he will abundantly pardon. Okay, our second passage of scripture is the book of Jeremiah. It is chapter number 29, verses 12 and 13. Jeremiah 29 and 12 says, Then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. Verse 13 says, And ye shall seek me and find me when ye shall search for me with all of your heart. And so this month we've been talking about how to seek the Lord, uh, how to find him, how to locate him so that we can get the benefit that comes from locating the Lord. Uh, our introduction says this. It says, A successful search for something or someone always leaves us as searchers with a feeling of accomplishment and satisfaction. It is great motivation for us to know that the efforts of our search have not been in vain, but that our efforts have been rewarded by locating the object of our search. The added benefit of finding what you're searching for is whatever you have been searching for and located can now be used to our advantage. I use the example of keys in our lesson on Sunday. As long as the keys are missing, you cannot use the keys to open or unlock anything. But as soon as you find them by searching for them and locate them, then you have access to the things that are locked with the use of that key. In like fashion, uh, there are certain things that are not accessible to us until we find the Lord. And once we find the Lord, then these things become uh, accessible to us. Uh, the prophet Isaiah encourages us to search and to seek the Lord. He tells us that we need to seek the Lord. He encourages us. He exhorts us to seek the Lord while the prophet Jeremiah instructs us how to conduct a successful search. Isaiah says, seek the Lord. Jeremiah says, 
If you're going to seek the Lord, here's the way to do it and be successful. So a successful search for the Lord not only motivates us with feelings of accomplishment and feelings of satisfaction, but we have the added benefits of finding the Lord. And when we find him, we find his favor, we find his guidance, we find the benefits that he will add to our lives. We also have great incentive to seek the Lord, knowing that in Hebrews 11 and 6, it says that he, God, is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So when we diligently and thoroughly and carefully look for the Lord, he rewards us for a diligent search. And so we've been looking all month about how uh, to seek the Lord, how to find him, a couple of definitions to rehearse and re. Uh, re, uh, uh, go over again in our lesson. Uh, the word seek means an attempt to find. It's effort put forth to find something. Uh, to seek something also is a desire to obtain it. So when you have a, a desire to obtain something, you put forth effort to seek and to find it. Uh, search is the verb form of seek. It is to try to find something by looking. And of course, it's the act of looking carefully, looking thoroughly, looking diligently, as the Bible says, to find and to locate. And so we spoke about three major points uh, in seeking the Lord. We said, first of all, you have to have a desire to search. Number two, you had to conduct the search. And then lastly, you want to ensure a successful search. So our points were a desire to search conducting that search and a successful search. Uh, on Wednesday, January 11th, we talk about a desire to search and we talked about how hunger and thirst initiates your search for food. When you get hungry, when you get thirsty, you go to the stove, you go to the cabinets, you go to the refrigerator in search of something to satisfy your hunger or to satisfy your thirst. Matthew 5 and 6 says, Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness. So if you're going to search for the Lord, you have to have a desire to search for him. And what that desire is, is a desire for righteousness. The old folks said, you got to have a do right mind. And not only do you have to have that appetite, but there are things that you can do that will help your appetite to be more hearty. On the natural side, um, you can develop an appetite for something by eating it while you don't have an appetite for it. If you don't like green beans, but you know green beans are good for you, you start eating green beans even though you don't like them. And once the body gets accustomed to you, you will develop an appetite for them and crave them. And so one way to develop an appetite is to have the discipline to eat something that, you know, isn't necessarily the best taste or the best desire for. The second way that you can uh, make your appetite more hearty is physical work, physical labor. Uh, when you move the big muscle groups, you generate the burning of more calories and the burning of more calories will cause the body to require the replenishing of those calories. And so service for the Lord, praying, uh, serving in the church, serving in an auxiliary, being a witness in your world will cause you to have more of a hunger, more of an appetite for the things of God. And so you have to have this do things to enhance your desire. And I don't have to tell you, once you get hungry enough, you're going to find something to eat. And once you get a hunger for righteousness, you will have a desire to do the things to seek the Lord. Once that desire has arisen, you have to conduct the search. You actually have to search. And by searching for the Lord, you want to make sure uh, that nothing hinders your search. And you want to make sure that you're looking in the right places. You don't want to be looking for God in the wrong places. You want to look for God in the right places. Uh, there are a couple of things that Jeremiah tells, or rather Isaiah tells us to do when we seek the Lord. We have to forsake our way. 
And we have to forsake unrighteous thoughts and return to the Lord. So the, our way of doing things, we can't do it. We have to see how God wants us to do things. And then we have to follow his direction. And we have to forsake our thoughts because our thoughts generated cause us to speak and do the things we do. So it's really kind of one in the same. In the same. It's talking about two parts of your heart. And so you have to make sure that they align in the right way. Your thoughts and your actions agree with God's word. Uh, not in our lesson, but in Isaiah 55, the Lord says to us, your ways are not my ways. Your ways are not my thoughts. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so are my ways above your ways. And so there has to be a transformation that takes place. We have to stop thinking the way we think and thinking the way the world dictates to us to think. And we have to think like God. So we have to forsake our way. We have to forsake our thoughts. We have to return to the Lord and then... We have to go to the places where the Lord said he would be found. And so uh, we must pray in the spirit. You got to pray in the spirit, not just pray, but you got to pray in the spirit because we don't know how to pray as we ought. But the spirit of God will make intercession for us and pray for us so that we pray the right thing and we pray the will of God. You have to study the word of God. There's no way to know what God is saying unless we study his word. The Bible says that man doesn't live by bread alone, but man lives by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And it is the word of God that builds faith in us. And it's with faith that we're able to please the Lord. And so we must build faith. Uh, we've got to study that word. Peter tells us to study to show ourselves approved unto God. We need to be workmen, reading that word, that need not to be ashamed. We have to rightly divide or cut straight the word of God. So we got to pray in the spirit. We got to study the word. We have to go to church. It's the Lord's house. It's the house of prayer. And it's where the preacher declares the word of the Lord. The Bible says that faith is developed by hearing the word of God. Faith comes by hearing. Hearing comes by the word of God. So you have to have the word of God to build faith. But then the Bible says, how can you hear without a preacher? That language implies that to build the kind of faith that you need, you have to have a God-sent preacher declaring the word of the Lord to you. Jeremiah said earlier in the third chapter, says that God said, he would give us pastors according to the heart of God. And the pastor's job, uh, I heard earlier on the uh, radio today, his job is to lead and feed. It is to lead the congregation by example and to feed them the word of God. Jeremiah says that he's going to feed you with knowledge and with understanding of God's word. And then the wise king Solomon says to us, that knowledge of the holy is understanding. Wisdom is principle, therefore get that. But with all thy getting, get understanding. What is understanding? Solomon said, it's knowledge of the holy. It's knowing what the word says about God, how he interacts with his people, what he has commanded us to do. And when we understand what God requires of us, then we can please him and build that faith. Isaiah says again, what is it, O oh man, that the Lord requires of thee to do justly, that is, be fair, love mercy, don't lower the boom on everybody, and walk humbly, not with pride, not with arrogance, but walk humbly with thy God. And so we have to conduct that search. We have to quit our ways, abandon our ways. We have to abandon our thoughts. We have to read God's word. We have to pray in the spirit and then we have to go to the places that God has designated we go to find him. It's in the congregation of the saints. There is, it's not a synergy, but there's a corporate anointing that is generated in the people of God. And you need to have access of that 
uh, to that anointing so that you can pursue God with people who have precious like faith. So uh, we're conducting our search, and in that search, we're searching the scriptures. Jesus said, they're the ones that testify of me. He said, believe on me. How? Not like grandma said and not like grandpa said or mom and dad. And it's okay if your grandpa and grandma and, and dad and mom have faith. But Jesus said, believe on me as the scriptures have said. So we have to capture the Jesus, the, uh, the Lord, the word of the scriptures so that we make sure we have the right one and not what society is offering to us as Jesus Christ. I'm going to park here just a minute because genuine Christianity is not liberal in the sense of accepting what the world offers. The liberty that God offers to us is not the liberty to do whatever we want to do. See, doing whatever you want to do is reckless because of the nature we have. Because we want to do some things that are not beneficial to us. But true liberty is freedom from repression. It's freedom from being made to do things that are to your detriment. Even God, even Christ does not make you do anything. He's given you a free will. He's set before you this day good and evil. And he said, you choose. But the wise choice is to choose good. Because when you sow good, good will come to you. Conversely, if you sow evil, evil will return to you. So the wise choice, the prudent choice, is to choose good. And by choosing good or choosing the Lord, seeking his way, you'll bring blessings and favor and you'll bring benefit to your life. And so we want to pursue and seek the God of the scriptures, not what people believe. See, the God of the scriptures is one that requires us to pursue holiness. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, He's not a remade creature. He's a new creature. He receives a new nature. And that new nature allows him to pursue things of God. And then Hebrews 12 and 14, it says, follow peace. People that seek God, they're peaceful people. Doesn't mean that they don't have strong standards and convictions, but they're not hell raisers. They're not rebel rousers and brawlers and, and strikers. They are people of peace. And as people of peace, it tells us to pursue peace, seek peace. Now, Hebrews again, 12 and 14 says, follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man is going to see the Lord. And so we are people that conduct this search for him and we accept the Jesus of the scripture. Jesus is the only way. To the Father. Acts 4 and 12 says, Neither is there salvation in any other. There is no other name given under heaven among men whereby we must be saved. Yes, there are other religions, but Jesus is the only way to the Father. It is uh, St. John 14 and 6. Most of us know that by heart. Jesus answers Thomas, He says, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No man comes to the Father except he comes by me. And so Jesus is the avenue. Jesus is the way for us to get to the Father. So it's in our best interest to seek the Lord because when we find him, we find access to the Father and into the kingdom of God. And so we have to have this desire to search for him, and then we have to search for him correctly. Uh, we have to look and search his word. We have to search for him in prayer. We have to pursue peace, and we have to pursue holiness. We have to do justly. We have to love mercy. We have to walk humbly with the Lord. We have to congregate at the Lord's house. We got to congregate at the Lord's house. Now, I know this evening we're at home because of the snow. We've had a snow day, and it's a blessing to have the stream and to hear the stream. But come on, abundant love. You know you cannot fulfill 
the word of Hebrews that says don't abandon to gather yourself together with the saints. Okay, the stream is good, but it is not a substitute for congregating with the saints. And so let's make use of it tonight. But Sunday morning, I expect to see you in the pew with us. Amen, church. Say amen right there. Okay, so uh, we have to obey the Lord. We have to obey his word, and we have to conduct this search of his word, this search through prayer, uh, sometimes to kill our desire like we're doing this particular month. You have to consecrate. You have to restrict your diet. You have to focus your prayer life and focus your attention. Get a prayer partner and pray with them and get along with people who are trying to do the same thing you're trying to do with precious light faith so that we can all come together and find the Lord because it would be such a shame for us to consecrate for 21 days and pray three times a day and to make contact, uh, you know, with a prayer partner and restrict our diet, take things out of our diet and still miss the Lord. And so our last point that I will bring uh, in this evening is the last point of our lesson. It is a successful search. And we want to be sure that our efforts are not in vain. We want to make sure that our search is successful. We want to make sure that we find what we are looking for. And that's what success is. Success is target hit. It is purpose achieved. You are successful when you complete what you intended to do, what you set out to do, what you planned to do. And so whatever you declared at the beginning of your search you wanted to find, you are successful when you find that thing or that person. So we said that we're seeking the Lord and we want to make sure that our uh, seeking is successful. What are the signs of a successful search? Glad you asked. The signs of a successful search is direction from God. In places where you're trying to make a decision, you get a sure word from God when you find him. He says, if you acknowledge me in all your ways, I'll direct your paths. He says, the steps of a good man are ordered and directed by the Lord. So one of the things we get from finding the Lord, we get direction. He gives us instructions about which way to go. When we find the Lord, we get correction. If we're going in the wrong direction or doing something incorrectly, the Lord will correct us and send us in the right direction. We get instruction in righteousness. That is, we get trained and we get the information that uh, we know how to please the Lord and to do what the Lord requires. I believe Paul told Timothy that all scripture is given by the inspiration of God. That is, it is literally God breathed. And these scriptures are good for uh, reproof. They're good for a doctrine, that is a system of teaching so that you know what to do. They're good for reproof. They will reprimand you when you've done something wrong. They're good for correction. After showing you it's wrong, it'll show you the right way to get it done. Instruction in righteousness. You will learn what it takes to be righteous before the Lord. And, and all of these things are given, it says, so that the man or the woman of God may be thoroughly furnished. And I say fully equipped to do all good works, every good work from the word of God. So when we find Jesus Christ, when we find the Lord, we find the fullness of the Godhead. Paul said that it pleased the Lord that in Christ, that all the fullness of the Godhead dwelled in him bodily. And then our relationship with him, we are not servants, but we become heirs, H-E-I-R, and joint heirs with Jesus Christ which means we share in the inheritance of Jesus Christ. What's the inheritance? Who for the joy that was set before him? The Bible says that God highly exalted him and has given him a name that's above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee is going to bow 
every tongue is going to confess that Jesus is Lord. And the Bible tells us that if we suffer with him, we shall also reign with him. And so there are crowns for us. There, there are rewards for being obedient. And there are benefits that we get from seeking the Lord. So what do we have to do to make sure that our search is successful? We're going to put this effort in. We're going to read the word. We're going to pray. Uh, we're going to congregate with the saints. We're going to forsake our ways. And we're going to forsake our thoughts. And doing all that, that's the instruction. But how can we ensure what's the guarantee that we can find the Lord and get all these things. Jeremiah tells us. He says that you shall find me when you seek me with all of your heart. All we have to do is ensure that all of our heart is included in the search for the Lord. Now when we talk about the heart, um, I can't go into much detail with it tonight, but I'll give you some. If you really want to know about the heart, if you go to last Sunday's message, January 22nd, and listen to that particular message, it'll give you much insight on what the heart is. But for, uh, for the short cliff note version tonight, there are three parts that make up your heart. There is your emotional state, what you feel. There is your mind. It is your thoughts and how you think. How you position your words from the contents of your heart. And then it is your will. Your will is where you make volitional decisions. So when you talk about your heart, when the Bible talks about your heart, it's not talking about this red beating thing that's in your chest and keeping blood going through your body. That's the organ of the heart. But when we talk about the heart... We're talking about the earnest of your person. We're talking about your innermost being. You are a spirit man that possesses a soul, but you live inside a body. This body is mortal. It's decaying. It's doomed to death. It's appointed unto man once to die. So this flesh is not going to live forever. That's why we have to be changed. And so death occurs not when the heart stops beating, Death doesn't occur when the brain waves stop. Death occurs when the spirit separates from the body. When the spirit and the soul leave the body, death occurs. And so you're a spirit man. You're inside a body. And so when you talk about the heart, you're talking about the central and the innermost part of your person. You're talking about the seat of your emotions and your feelings, your passions. You're talking about your thoughts and your way of thinking, your attitudes and how you formulate words and communicate and express yourself. And then we're talking about the will. It is that volitional part of us where you have the right to make decisions, good or bad. You have the freedom and the right to make decisions. Jeremiah says that we will find the Lord when... We search for him with all of our heart. And what he means is that your emotions, your mind, and your will all have to be involved and focused when it comes to seeking the Lord. First of all, your emotional state has to be involved. You got to care about this. Okay. You got to care about the things of God. You got to care deeply about the word. You got to care deeply about the church. You got to care deeply about the people of God. You have to care deeply about knowing what God requires of you and doing your best to complete what the Lord requires of you. you it's got to matter to you. Okay, it should make you feel good on top of cloud nine when you complete what the Lord has told you to do. And it should make you feel bad. There should be, you know, a little sting when you know God told you to do something and you have failed to do what God has told you to do. So your emotional state has to be involved. You have to be emotionally involved with the things of God and your relationship with God. You have to feel absolutely wonderful when God is present and next to you and you have to feel bad when there has been a chasm or a breach between you and the Lord in your relationship. So you have to care. It's got to mean, it's got to mean something to you. 
And when you are emotionally involved and you care about it, you have given it high priority. And that's what the Lord requires. The Lord requires us to hold him in high, or should I say the highest priority. He said, the Lord your God is one Lord. You shall love the Lord thy God with everything in you, with your heart, your mind, your soul, and the strength of your body. I, I did that for strength, but there, you, I still got to work on that. But you know what I mean. It takes a full body expression and a full body effort to seek the Lord. And so you have to be emotionally involved in seeking the Lord. Number two, your mind has to be involved. Your way of thinking has to change. If you've been thinking one way while you weren't, Sinking, we're not seeking the Lord, then there should be a change of your thinking when you decide to search for the Lord. Uh, it is Romans 12 and 2 that says, be not conformed to this world. We are not to let the world shape us by outside pressure. The word conform means to be shaped by outside pressure. Uh, the best example of it is a jello mold. When you make jello, whatever the shape of the container that you put it in, when it congeals, that's the shape it will take because it's been shaped not from the inside, it's been shaped from the outside. The Bible tells us that we're not supposed to be changed like that. We're not supposed to let the world dictate how we are shaped in our lifestyle. In fact, the Bible tells us not even to love the world. We're not to love the world. We're not to love the things in the world. The Bible tells us if any man loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Because no man can serve two masters. You can't serve the world and serve mammon and serve evil and serve the Lord at the same time. And so we have to not be conformed. But we are to be transformed. And transformation is a complete change. We get our word metamorphosis from the word transform. And it means to be changed completely into a different creature and a, deep, a different being. It is the caterpillar with all those legs and that furry little body that crawls up a tree. He spins a silk cocoon and he stays in there for a period of time. And in the privacy of that cocoon, when he comes from the cocoon, he looks nothing like he went in. He's this big, beautiful butterfly with only, I think, six legs and these big, fluffy wings. And now, instead of crawling everywhere he goes, he just floats and flutters to where he's going. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says this of us. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's not a remade creature, not a remodeled creature, not a renewed creature. He is a new creature. And this new creature is uh, personified by old things passing away. Old way of thinking about things. Old things that we used to do and old things that we used to perform are passed away. And now all things are become new. And we put on Christ and we walk now in the newness of life. And so if we're going to search for the Lord, we have to be emotionally involved. Our mind has to be involved. You have to uh, include your thinking when it comes to seeking the Lord. Now, what do you mean include your thinking, Pastor Bush? It means that your mind is going to change as you are exposed to new information. This is why the Bible study the Sunday school and the teaching sessions of your church along with your personal study are direly important because it is teaching and training that is going to allow you to transform your thinking, which is going to transform your walk and lifestyle with the Lord. The church is getting passing grades for praise and worship, but we are getting failing grades for, for prayer and teaching and study. Okay. Most of the church, most of the visible, uh, recognizable church, will come for the preaching on Sunday morning. But it is those teaching sessions. A lot of churches don't even have Sunday school anymore. But whatever session they have, there has to be a session where it's not just a lecture, teaching, or preaching of the word, but there has to be an inter action, a dialogue of the word where it's open for discussion 
and it's open for questions so that we can get fuller understanding of the Word of God. And as the knowledge changes, our mind changes. You can't have a new thought without new information. So you got to have new information. More information of the Word will bring thoughts of righteousness to you, and your mind will be transformed. And so you got to have feelings about it. you got to have your mind transformed. And then you have to command and discipline your will. What do you mean command your will? I mean the body is going to follow the decision that the will makes. You have a decision before you and you have the right to say yay or nay. Now, if you say yay or yes, there's a benefit to the things that are good for you when you say yes. But if you say no, there's a consequence to it. And that's what I said about liberty. Liberty is not just doing whatever you want to do. It's freedom from repression, but it is freedom to make decisions that benefit you. Sometimes we have to make beneficial decisions that don't feel good. And that's why you have to command your will. Command is a military term that means authority. It's an order of authority. And every order of authority, when you obey an order, the authority works for you. And when you disobey an order, that same authority works against you. You have to command your will when it comes to seeking the Lord. You have to do things that the body doesn't feel like doing, but will be beneficial for you if you follow through with them. I use this example. Uh, if you are working a job, normally after a two-day weekend, after you know having some leisure on Saturday and Sunday, something about Monday morning is kind of tough to get up. And, you know, on a cold winter January day like this, uh, the bed is warm, the floor is cold, the air is cold outside, and there's a feeling in your body that will say, this is warm, stay in the bed, you don't need to go to work today. And while that's a feeling that the body believes is good for us, there are consequences to that decision. Because if you stay in the bed that day, don't have sick day and don't have a vacation day, you're going to be a day short on your paycheck. And a day sh short on your paycheck is not all going to allow you to do what you can do with a full paycheck. And so when that voice says to you, stay in the bed, uh, you have to command your will. You have to say, you know what? Even though you feel like staying in bed, uh, there's a benefit to me getting out of this bed and going to work. And then at the end of the week on Friday, you get the payoff of that decision to get out of the bed on Monday. See where I'm at? Let me try one more. On Sunday morning, after working all week, Monday through Friday, there's a tendency to say, you know what? I've worked hard all week and I should just lay in the bed on Sunday and I'll be all right. I'll feel better. Now, that sounds like a good decision. But even though you lay in the bed, you will miss the presence of the saints of God. You will miss the rainbow word that's specifically designed for that particular setting. And then somewhere later in the week where you need that information and you need the anointing that accompanies that information, uh, you will be lacking. Faith comes by hearing. Hearing comes by the word of God. You want to make sure that when you get to every challenge, you have the faith that you're supposed to have to meet that particular challenge. And so you got to command the will. You have to do what you don't feel like doing, but what is beneficial for your spirit man. Okay. You have to read that word even when you're tired and you don't feel like it. You have to pray in the spirit even when you're weary and don't feel like praying. You have to get up and press your way to the services and the worship and praise of the Lord because everything that has breath is supposed to praise him. And we say that he's always worthy of praise, whether we feel in it or whether we not. And you know what I found? I have found that if you start praising God when you don't feel like it, you move from a place of not feeling like it to feeling it. I mean, you can literally 
praise your way into the spirit of praise. The Bible says that you can put on the garment of praise. You can trade it for the spirit of heaviness. It's kind of like working out in the gym. Many mornings I get up and I don't feel like going to the gym. I feel like just standing in the bed. But I got a partner, my, my brother, Pastor Lester Bush. I know he's going to be there. And so even though I don't feel like getting up, I don't want to disappoint him. And I go and I meet him anyway. And it is remarkable. Once you get in the gym and once you start moving, you feel so much better than staying in the bed. And so it's the same way. There's a payoff when you seek the Lord. And to be successful, we have to search for him with all of our heart. We've got to make sure we're emotionally attached to the Lord, to the relationship and the things of God, which include the church and the saints of God. We have to make sure that we are engaged in educating and re-educating our mind. We have to spend time in the word of God. Not so much on the, you know, social media and television and tablets, but we have to increase our time in the Word of God for the re-education and the renewing and the transformation of our mind. And then lastly, we have to command our will. Amen. We have to take a firm stance with this flesh man because the carnal mind is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So we have to take authority over the flesh man so that we can do God's will. And when you include your feelings and include your mind and include your will, you are guaranteed to find the Lord. Because Jeremiah said, you will find me when, when will you find me? When you search for me with all of your heart. And when all of your heart is involved, God has promised. God does not break promises. He will fulfill his promise and we will find him. And then once we find him, we get all that the Lord offers. We get the benefit of his favor. We get his grace. We get his mercy. We get his guidance. We get his company. He accompanies us. And he said, lo, he said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'm with you always until the end of the age. And so I want to encourage you. I certainly hope and pray that your search for the Lord this month has been successful. I have experienced a, a, a lifting and a raising in the anointing in my life. And even though there have been some challenges, uh, the power and the strength of the Lord certainly has carried us through. And so that's my prayer for you. This month, we're going to seek the Lord. We're going to find the Lord. And then we're going to carry the favor of the Lord throughout this year with us. 2023 is going to be a great year for us. We started it out right. And once we got this ball rolling, we're going to continue to let it roll. And we're going to glorify the Lord and get the benefit that comes from locating the Lord. And so God bless you. Certainly thank you for tuning in this evening. Uh, I want you to prepare yourself to give this evening. And even though you're not in the sanctuary, I uh, would like for you to grab your mobile phone. Uh, there are a couple of ways that you can give this evening. We use two apps with the telephone. We use Givelify. And we can be found under the Abundant Love Church in Fort Wayne, Indiana. That is the Abundant Love Church in Fort Wayne, Indiana. And people ask me this uh, frequently, but it is not an Air Force base. It, it, I mean, it was, uh, you know, a, a fort uh, during, uh, you know, the Civil War times and just afterwards. But it's actually a city. It's not a military city. It is the second largest city in the state of Indiana. It's in northeast Indiana. A nice place to raise a family. Some of the greatest people you'll ever find live here in Fort Wayne, Indiana. So we can be found on Givelify Abundant Love Church in Fort Wayne, Indiana. And then certainly we have a cash app address. And that address is dollar sign Abundant Love Church. I want to take this opportunity to thank each of you all uh, for your participation and how you support financially our ministry. I can guarantee you uh, that it goes for the upbuilding of the kingdom of God. Amen? Amen. Okay, all right. God bless you. Heaven smile upon you. Thank you for tuning in this evening. I think we had a good time this evening. Hopefully, uh, we have done the things 
uh, hopefully to edify and to help build your faith. And so if the Lord delays his coming and the weather permits, uh, we hope to see you all Sunday morning, 29th of January, ends our consecration, and we're going to look for a mighty outpour from the presence of the Lord. Amen? Amen. Okay. All right. Well, I'm going to uh, have a word of prayer here to dismiss us this evening. Of course, if you have any questions or any comments, if you put those comments in the comment area of this stream or... You can mail those questions or comments to AbundantLove at Frontier.com. That is AbundantLove at Frontier.com. I do get those questions. I do answer those questions. Uh, and we do our best to give you, a, you know, an answer from the Bible so that your faith and your confidence in the truth can be built. Amen? Amen. Okay. All right. Let's pray. I was waiting for the person to come and turn off the camera today, but I guess after I pray, I'll have to get up and turn it off myself. Okay. All right. Let's pray here. Father, in the matchless and the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we thank you uh, for such an opportunity this evening to study your word, to glean from your word, uh, to gather truth of your word. You said that we would know the truth and that the truth would make us free. You said who the Son set free is free indeed. And so we thank you for freedom. We thank you for liberty that comes from the truth of your word. I thank you, God, that we are going to have and have had a successful search for you. Thank you, Father, that we are emotionally involved. And we thank you that our mind is being transformed. And we thank you, Lord, that we are disciplining and tempering our will so that we can do the things that you have required us to do. Bless every hearer of your word this evening. And don't let us be hearers only, but help us to be doers of the word. And as we do your word and perform your word, let us glorify you and let obedience bless us. Now give us a prosperous evening this evening. Watch between us until we are able to come together again. And we ask it all in the matchless name of Jesus Christ. Thank God. Amen and amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful evening. See you Sunday.